the show. TV's only source for all the stuff you care about. Thank you to the six people who are here at Comic-Con. You guys are, uh, are true champions. I'm Kevin Pereira. Good to see you. Thanks to you, Kevin, for making it in today. I know you're not feeling too well, so thanks to that. Well, thank you, Candace Bailey, for admitting all that to the world. Appreciate you're welcome. That. I am Candace Bailey. Yes, you are. Thanks. We're coming to you live from the G4 studios in Los Angeles. And, uh, we're half dead, I'm not gonna lie. We, we barely Exhausted. survived Comic-Con, <laughs> but it was incredible. Your first convention. It was my first convention. So, what do you think? any wonderful memories so or awesome. just um, the nerd flu? Panel, John Favreau, amazingness. Um, my first line, of course, I messed up. Oh that yeah, the very fun. first line of our <laughs> that, big show, Candace's coming out fun. party at Comic-Con. What happened? Well, we hadn't actually run it, and uh, you took a pause, and I saw my name up there on teleprompter, and I go, so this is your first Comic-Con. Right. And as I'm saying it, I realized yeah. it was meant for me. Yeah, but Candace's <laughs> name was there because I was supposed to ask Candace that question, which is uh, always great. Uh, you mentioned our panel. Just thank you to, to everybody Yay. who came out to our panel. Yeah, Over 2,000 so people, a bunch of folks got turned away. It was pretty incredible. We had a lot of fun. There was some um, nasty smoothie drinking. There, yeah, someone chugged a smoothie made of Spam, uh, Tabasco sauce, oh. anchovies. Mayonnaise. And I think mayonnaise, yeah. yeah. I had a sip Delish. as well. It was not yeah, good. Yeah, I don't know why you had a sip. Solidarity sip. <laughs> Weird. Bra, you're gonna have one today. Oh. Just wait. Mm -mm. You're gonna hear the sound of the blender by right before the epic happening. fail. Um, and then, oh, I want to point out, there's so many cool like limited edition collectibles and things and whatnot. This isn't mine. Uh, someone else here at G4 got this. This is from Techno Whoa. Kitten Adventure. Whoa. It's very fragile. I'm probably gonna break it. But Don't there it break is. It. Oh yeah, there were a whole bunch That's of uh, cool. rocket pack kittens going around, which is cool. Look at you. Yeah. Some fun stuff. <laughs> All right, but let's get to it. We are here. We're ready to make a show. Woo! Yeah. It's probably going to be a seven, <laughs> but why not? On the show today, the Beautiful. one and only William Shatner will be here live in studio. His new documentary, The Captains, finally reveals what it's like to command a starship. <laughs> Candace just broke the rocket cat. I didn't. I was just moving it. Plus, America's invading Japan. Yay! Yay! Well, allow me, to, allow me to rephrase that. American Ninja Warrior is returning. That's what's happening. Sarah Underwood will show you the dangers of the new course. And is NVIDIA's quad-core laptop. I'm sorry. The perfect gaming on the go solution. I can tell you now, but instead I'm going to make you wait for GadgetCon. Just fix it for me, please. I, can't, I, I barely even touched it. I just moved it. Okay, kid. We're going to fly uh, very delicately. Yeah, give it away. Give it away. Get it out of here. I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> Plus, today we launched our second annual AOTS Art Contest. Yay! And this year is based on your favorite viral videos. We'll give you the lowdown a little bit later. <sighs> Kitty save. It is. Sure. See, that was easy. Yeah. Hope you have your Comic Con hangovers. Yes, yeah, around the net stops for no one. <laughs> a video called Exploding Sewer. You would think. It's like a bidet for cars. Yes, it is. Well, like a reverse one, technically, because I think you're, yeah, you're rocketing crap into the back end, right? OK, yeah. Ew, that's really gross. Yeah, it was. You know, that would be a really complicated insurance form to fill out. Well, no, Chevy Enema is actually a form <laughs> on my insurance. So just check the box. Listen, in my house, things explode into the sewer. And it's classified as an act of God, so I can't, Thank can't you. claim it. Thank you. Yes, that's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Look. Filmmaking is a little different in Japan. We already know that. For example, in Hollywood, having your lady heroine in a skimpy outfit shooting a machine gun is no brainer. Sure. Same rule applies in the land of the rising sun. The only thing that's different, though, is the location of said machine gun. I'm 
That looked that awesome and way, crazy. way too easy. Hold on a second, let me see. Oh, the logo! Okay, Kevin, 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 Kevin! What? 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 Hold, what? No. 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 Mr. Don't. No. Be quiet, Kevin! Kevin, don't do oh, that. All right, I okay? I want, I want, You're freaking I me out I here. I thought it'd be funny. I know. We just no. got back from con. It's not funny. Me the quiet, Kevin! Oh, oh, Seen. Oh, it was not. I'm sorry. What I'm was sorry. that? I think it was a Why hand. did you do that? that was a hand. <laughs> it backfired. I'm sorry. The Constitution oh. says that there should be a separation between church and state. Yep. It says nothing about church and auto racing, though, which means there was nothing to stop Pastor Joe Nelms from tossing out a truly amazing blessing at this weekend's NASCAR race. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for all your blessings. You said in all things give thanks. So we want to thank you tonight for these mighty machines that you brought before us. Thank you for the Dodges and the Toyotas. Thank you for the Fords. And most of all, we thank you for Roush and Yates partnering to give us the power that we see before us tonight. Thank you for GM Performance Technology and the R07 engines. Thank you for Sunoco Racing Fuel and Goodyear Tires that bring performance and power to the track. Lord, I want to thank you for my smoking hot wife tonight, Lisa. My two children, Eli and Emma, or as we like to call them, the little E's. Lord, I pray you bless the drivers and use them tonight. May they put on a performance worthy of this great track. In Jesus' name, boogity, 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 amen. <laughs> boogity, boogity, boogity. <laughs> That's in Psalms, actually. It's a little known passage. <laughs> Look, if I knew God would give me a hot wife, I would have started praying a long time ago. And your hot wife would probably pray for an annulment. Oh. Boom! Oh. Bamf, I mean! What? <laughs> <That's> something. <laughs> and at number two, a video of a Japanese delicacy. <laughs> it's a Monday show. After a convention weekend. It happens. Uh, this delicacy, though, you have to eat it quickly. In case it escapes. <laughs> Support the head. <laughs> That's a yay. <laughs> All right. I don't think so. I bet it dances like that even when you're swallowing it. That's probably the cool part. Okay, I think I'm a vegetarian now. Oh, oh, I'm, I didn't realize you're a vegetarian. In yeah, that I case. guess so. After that. Really? I don't know how the fort got in there. I'm sorry. That is so sweet. Enjoy. Yeah, I, I didn't realize you were a vegetarian. I wouldn't have. Uh... Mm. That is good yeah. salad. No, the ham was really disrespectful mm. of me earlier. Mm. I, I kind of wanted some of that. Yeah. Really good. In fact, hold on a second. Oh, God. Wow. Cheers. That is delicious. Cheers to you. Yeah. <laughs> Ahead. You should probably grab a bark bag. It gets worse. Yeah. Number one, Indiana's up next. Pretty good. Yeah. Number one video is a chronicle of excess gone terribly wrong. Turns out that even inanimate objects can have a rough night out. Wow. 
Is it over? It's time for Celebrity Cup Rehab with Dr. Sola. Oh, oh, hey, doctor. Uh, I don't even know why I'm here. Uh, Styrofoam cup? You're here because you've hit rock bottom what? and you need some help. Well, that, that's ridiculous. Doctor, I don't have a problem. That's ridiculous. Oh, God, Actually, it's ridiculous. I think you're crazy. Your daughter Dixie is here to confront you about your addictive behavior and the impact it has what? had on her life. Well, no, Di no that's, that's my little girl. Why'd you bring Daddy? her into this? Oh, Dixie. You Daddy! Oh, no, Dixie, I don't, want you to oh, I don't want you to see me like this, Dixie. You affected oh. Dixie in so many ways. I, uh... I can no longer hold my liquid. Oh, no. Oh, no, Dixie. Daddy's here. Daddy's here. Daddy's here, Dixie. Oh. oh my God! Oh my God, Dixie! I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Dixie. Oh my God! Oh my God, Dixie! American Ninja Warrior has once again assembled its obstacle course. As hundreds of ninja hopefuls flock to the beach in search of fame, glory, and the chance to head to the granddaddy of them all, Mount Midoriyama in Japan. Let's break this down. What's the first obstacle? The first obstacle is Quintuple Steps. It's a tough game to start with. This is called Log Grip. It's an exciting new game that we've got. What's the trick to completing this one? Hold on. Hold on for dear life. Dear life. This is Bridge of Blades. We had this one last year. It's freewheeling, and you have to hop from blade to blade to blade. This one, you need speed, and just try to hopscotch across or, or take it at an angle. I loved trampolines as a kid, but this doesn't look quite as fun. This is, I think, our hardest game. It's called Jump Hang. What's the strategy for this one? The strategy is to try to jump as high as you can and grab the net, not to get forward momentum. As soon as they get forward momentum, they're done. All right, this is the last obstacle. What the heck did you build here? Yeah, this is called Warp Wall. It's 14 feet tall. This takes agility and, and timing to make this one. And uh, is there any advice for someone like me who is five foot two? A lot of speed and just jump as hard as you can. With new twists and turns, this year's American Ninja Warrior course is truly a formidable foe. Oh, no. A chosen few will pass the test, and many others will fail miserably. Oh. Who's going to be the next American Ninja Warrior? You're going to have to tune in to find out. Comic-Con may be over, but for the first time ever, Iron Man, Wolverine, X-Men, and Blade are coming to G4 Anime Style. Is the exclusive U.S. broadcaster of Marvel Anime and Iron Man and Wolverine. They're going to premiere July 29th at 11 p.m. Eastern. For more information, head to g4tv.com slash marvel. Still ahead, we've heard of fake iPods, but there are now fake Apple stores? Yeah. Sarah Underwood will explain in a few. Huzzah! Then we're playing videos two inches, gaming laptop to the test and gadget prawn. And later, oh, Captain Minecraft. William Shatner. This couple's trying to get down on the dance floor. So what happens next? Does he throw her over his head? Does he drop her on her ass? Or does he lose his balance and they both fall off the stage? Find out when we return. Taking a nap 
on nature's pillow. <laughs> then snag one of these headresters over at bootypillows.com oh. Oh, for 30 bucks. This couple's trying to get down on the dance floor. So what happens next? Does he throw her over his head? Does he drop her on her ass? Or does he lose his balance and they both fall off the stage? <laughs> well, I guess that's one way to get down. <laughs> hey, look! The Twitter wall survived Comic-Con! Hey, look at that! Uh, Insomniac 24-7. Well, all right. Said, did those cups learn that from Drunk Iron Man? Oh. Uh, no. Drunk Iron Man traditionally fails at puking the first few times we try, and then it works. So, no. That one worked right off the bat. Our silent. Kevin, my sippy cup has a drug problem. When can you get in to see the doctor? Uh, it depends what kind of drugs, because maybe he needs to stop by my house first. Oh. Kevin! For counseling. Oh. Oh, sure. Counseling. Sure, got it. <laughs> got it. Um, Sly Andrew Cooper says that squid may have made Candace a vegetarian, but yes. Kevin crapping a salad and a ham has turned me off of food forever. Right? Yeah. Me too, I think. Um, <laughs> that was a good time to welcome any new viewers we just lost from Comic-Con. <laughs> Hi, it was nice knowing you. Um, but for that tweet, uh, Sly Andrew Cooper, you actually deserve this. High quality photos of dudes who could fight you dead. Yay! The Men of Warrior coffee table book from the upcoming Lionsgate film Warrior. If I hold the it just right, it might sale. look like it's me. Hold on. <laughs> you have a great body. The book goes on sale August night. It's always for me, right? It does. <laughs> Looks good. That's my own blood. Uh, if you want to be part of our show and end up on our Twitter wall, tweet us at AOTS or use the hashtag AOTS. It's that easy, That's Candace. That's right. It's that so easy, easy y'all. Yeah. So easy. Time now for some hard hitting news. Straight from Columbia University's Graduate School of Journalism. <laughs> It's Sarah Underwood! Yay! Not graduated from Oregon State University dropout! Yay! Yeah! Let's go, Pam! <laughs> All the news you need to know. The feed, 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 feed. It's Monday, July 25th, and here are your top stories. Countries like China are known for their counterfeit DVDs and clothing, but the People's Republic just got caught with fake Apple stores. What? Yeah! Chinese officials recently shut the doors of two unsanctioned Apple stores in the city of Kunming. While Apple is aware of the fakes, the surprisingly convincing ripoffs weren't actually shut down because of infringement. They were closed because they didn't have proper business permits. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make any sense at all. There are apparently three other fake stores in the area that are still open and staffed with employees that think they really work for Cupertino. But does that mean they still get the Apple employee discount? That's what I want to know. And is real life socializing just too much for you? Yeah. Well, it's your lucky day. Avatar Connect is finally here. Uh-huh, the Xbox platform reads users' voice and facial expressions so they can talk with ever other avatars like it's real life face-to-face -face interaction. There are 24 virtual environments where people can watch and discuss sports or record vir virtual TV talk shows that can be shared with friends. It's available for free to Xbox Gold subscribers, but it's unlocked for all Xbox Live members until September. Yay! And the state of Arizona is about to erect a massive solar tower in the middle of the desert. I knew you'd like that, Kevin. Uh, how massive, you ask? How massive? <laughs> it is twice the height of the Empire freaking State Building, people! Yeah. Massive! The Super Solar Tower will reach a height of over 2,600 feet and provide about 200 megawatts to over 150,000 homes. The Australian company behind the design also says it won't need any maintenance until it's at least 80 years old. Yay, clean energy! Yeah! And finally, the site of the very first Chuck E. Cheese has been officially added to the registry of historic gaming locations. Woohoo! <laughs> the San Jose, California pizza restaurant slash arcade was built in 1977. Fun fact! The initial concept for it was a clever idea cooked up by Atari founder Nolan Bushnell to expand Atari's reach by pairing it with family-friendly food and entertainment. 
Personally, I still get nightmares from that creepy animatonic band. Even as a kid, I was like, this crap is dumb. I just want to play in the balls. Yeah. All I want to do is play in the balls, Mom. That's what she said. <laughs> just ball. You, you know. <laughs> like the ball, like the <laughs> I'm Sarah Underwood, and you've just been fed. You know what I mean. Now back to you guys. <laughs> Want to do some gaming? <laughs> uh, yeah, she said ball. Yeah, she did. It's and, Gadget Prime. Uh, yeah. <laughs> The words gaming laptop sometimes seem like an oxymoron, which is why MSI made the GT683. It's packing NVIDIA's GTX 560M graphics, up to 16 gigs of RAM, and Intel's quad-core i7 processor. So you'll be able to play all the latest games on a machine that's only two inches thick. Combine all that with Dynaudio surround sound and DirectX 11 compatibility for the ultimate in portable gaming at $1,500. Here she is. Gaming laptops have a reputation for being heavy and dorky. Uh, is this one any difference? <laughs> Pervs. Uh, yeah, it's a little on the heavy side. Uh, it's a little less than eight pounds, so it's not the heaviest gaming laptop we've reviewed, but it is mm -hmm. hefty to say the least. Um, there's lights on the side and the front. I think that's a little dorky. So. Oh, I think it's sexy. Really? Yeah. These lights. Is that all it takes? Super. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, super yeah. sexy. Yeah, I'll turn them on and off for you. They <laughs> Stop breathe. It. You know. Yeah. No, it's it's a great way to signal that you're the guy at the land party that uh, really needs to get laid the most. But other than that, <laughs> you can shut them off. Uh, you, you can shut them off. That's all you need to know. Whatever. Now, there are a bunch of other buttons here above the keyboard. All sorts of buttons on this thing. Are they useful? Uh, they do stuff, if that's what you're asking, yeah. <laughs> One okay. increases the resolution and the brightness of the screen. Another squeezes an extra 5% out of the graphics card. Uh, and a fan button will cool your laptop but make you sound like you're in a wind tunnel. Uh, awesome. The buttons are responsive. We're not 100% sold on their usefulness. I would rather them kind of blow these buttons out and then mm -hmm. make the trackpad a little bit larger. Yeah. But that's just me. Now, how are the keyboard and the touchpad? Well, the keyboard is full size. There's plenty of room for uh, big gamer hands. Yeah, uh, lots of room. Yeah, no, plenty of room. Unfortunately, though, the touchpad is cramped. The left and right buttons require extra no. finger strength. <laughs> well, like, it's one of those things where if you're using a, a trackpad, even if you're scrolling around or checking email, you want to be able to easily click with your thumb because you're probably using your index finger or your middle finger to swipe it's around. It's not very easy. You have to press pretty hard. Um, but then it's a, it's a gaming laptop. You're probably going to use an external mouse instead of the touchpad anyways, but I wanted to point that out. All right, well, how do the games look and sound? Most importantly, really good like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we played Witcher 2 on the high graphics settings, which would bring most laptops to their knees if they had legs. And the game looked incredible. It played great. There was no noticeable drop in frame rate. Do you notice one there, Candace? Nothing. Because there isn't one. It's amazing. Uh, the two speakers are much better than we're used to. They actually put out some surprisingly good sound. Uh, there's a subwoofer on the bottom. There's a little guy down here. I'm gonna see him there. Hello. Little exhaust port. That's where you aim for. Um, and you'll get some decent bass from your tunes and your games. Look at her. <laughs> How fast is it compared to other gaming laptops, Kevin? Uh, in our 2D and 3D benchmarks, Candice. Yes. The MSI machine came out on top against others in its price range. And the nice. only gaming laptops that actually scored better in the 3D tests, they cost thousands of dollars oh, more. Oh, hell no. The GT683 sells for $1,500 and comes with one terabyte of storage <laughs> and 12 gigs of RAM. At that price, what are we rating it? Four out of five. Nice. Four out of five. If you're on a budget, you still want high performance gaming on the go, it is a great value. Yay. Well, that's it for today's Gadget Prom. But if you have a gadget you'd like to see us rate, email us at gadgetprom at g4tv.com. Hey, guess what, everybody? What? Attack of the Art Show is back! Yay! Last year, the theme was Keyboard Cat, and people sent in everything from paintings to statues to puppets. Some even included Kevin or put Keyboard Cat in other famous viral videos. But this year, you can make art inspired by any viral video you want. That's insane. You have until August 19th to send us your work of art for parodying uh, your favorite viral video, and you got to send it to us. We'll pick the winner and we'll fly them out. Do we uh, actually pick the winner? Uh, I think everybody does. Collectively, okay. the internet might get in on it. We'll see. All right. Uh, but uh, we'll have more details on that. The important thing is to make your art, send it now, and the winner will be flown out as our guest of honor yeah. at the second annual Tag of the Art Show. Uh, and that's going to launch at Meltdown Comics in Hollywood. It's, it's, it was such a great time last year. We ended up raising a lot of money for charity. Nice. So I hope you guys get involved with it again. Now head on 
over to G4TV.com slash art show for more info. Now it's time to attack these USB sticks. Oh, yay. Yeah. Just like a man's naughty bits, when it comes to USB storage, size matters. Oh. But when it's USB drives, it's the smaller the better. Sorry, Kevin. Oh. So if you want the smallest and the fastest, check out these PQI Intelligent USB keys. These USB 3 nubbins are the world's slightest and smallest, measuring in at just three centimeters long. And while they may be tiny, they can hold up to 32 gigs of data. Unfortunately, these little guys aren't available just yet, but you can grab a USB 2 version now at shop.pqi.com. But if you prioritize style over size, then you'll want to up your nerd cred with some Mimo Bot USB BSD. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. These little drives are designated to look like characters that any fanboy can appreciate, yeah. from their new Optimus Prime to the good old fashioned Darth Vader or Boba Fett. Each nerded out USB key can hold up to 32 gigs. So show off your allegiance no matter where you travel for around 20 to 80 bucks at MimoCo.com. This is really cool. I like that. All right. Whee! I'm proud to introduce the USB drive to end all USB drives, the homemade steampunk USB key. Enterprising Russian designer Terator cooked up this one-of-a-kind cylindrical drive in AutoCAD and fashioned it with his own two Ruski hands. The metal encasing is actually an old-school five-number combo lock, so you can protect all your secrets Nathan Drake style. He doesn't detail its capacity, but who gives a damn? Are you seeing this thing? Territor shared his schematics online so you can build your own. What are you laughing at? But good luck with that. What's going on? Stay tuned. William Shatner will be here live in the studio. What are you laughing at? The feed is brought to you by the General Automobile Insurance Services. For the best car insurance rates online, go to the General and save some time. Fail. You're dead. Major fail. Fail. Fail, 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 fail. You lose. Come on, he's a man who needs no introduction, but... Well, but try. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to give you uh, one anyway. It's contractually spell obligated the, to Spell the name right, if you will. Uh, 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 the producer and director of The Captains, I uh, believe it's William Shatner, everybody. Yeah! Yeah, exactly. So... Yeah, I know the the whole effect here is Comic Con, you know. Yeah. And I was at Comic Con. Yeah. And I, I helicoptered down there. I missed the whole all that traffic. <laughs> and you landed on about 500 people. Didn't even care. No. Just got right out. They had their the arms heads. lifted up and they supported the helicopter. <laughs> and they helped me off. And then where's I'm, my fleshy landing pad? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I love that. Well, how is it? I mean, the con for you. I mean, to say that your Comic Con royalty is like understatement of the century. Well, yes, it is an understatement. Statement. <laughs> it's so understated that I don't even understand what you're talking about because nobody, I mean, everybody's interested in what they're doing. Nobody's interested in you. I, mean, oh, I don't believe that for half a second. Really? I don't believe that for half a second. I didn't get by on that. Okay. No. Well, let me try something else. <laughs> uh, well, how is it? Are the fans, are they, are they absolutely rabid with you or do they, do they, yeah. are, are they? Well, I mean, they're tearing clothes off. So I have, I dress, I double dress. <laughs> <laughs> I have shirts that they can tear off. <laughs> you carry layers, right, right and then I, I, I end up with a with a uh, with a sweatshirt saying, uh, "What captain are you?" <laughs> as long as it doesn't end with pasties and tears, then I'm happy. No, I'm, I'm happy. not fit for pasties. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got. I, I, I only think pasty. My complexion is the only thing that's pasty. Uh, the captain's documentary. This is something you've wanted to do for a while. Well, this it is. is. It's an idea that I had for some while, and uh, it was to find out the actors who uh, played the captains of Star Trek, who they were and what they were like, mm -hmm. and what common traits did we have, what, what were the differences, and I had to go far and wide to reach them, I had to invent things that were different for each interview, and I did in-depth talks with everybody. It was great fun, lots of laughs, Lots of thoughtful stuff. And you didn't, I thought, isn't there like an annual captain's buffet at your ranch where everybody gets to, I imagine you guys get together all the time. Was this the first time they've yeah, all been together? Yeah, we all wore together? our pasties and, um... <laughs> there we go. But, no, no, uh, we don't know each other. 
uh, uh, particular. Mm -hmm. It happened in different years, different eras, different things happened. And so I barely knew any of these people. I now think of them as friends. Uh, it, the length of time you spend with somebody isn't as important as the quality of time. Right. And the quality of time that I spent with each one of these people was superb, and some of it's reflected on the screen. Well, and you said that uh, in other interviews that I've read that, uh, yes, the captains are there and there's Star Trek footage and whatnot, but this is really a, a tale about people. And It's it, all about people. Mm -hmm. It's all about the, the, the way they moved in life, their journeys in life, and what the similarities were. It, it's terribly moving, terribly funny. Is it, is it tragic, though, because no matter what that path is, the end of their journey, they're still not William Shatner? Did that break your heart? <laughs> That broke their heart, but <laughs> I was elated. <laughs> um, you were, you were, I mean, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, fundamentally changed in, in some way. I know at the end of the movie... Uh... There was an arc mm -hmm. to the story that, you know, making a documentary is a discovery process. I didn't fully comprehend that. You've got a, it's a conversation. Right. I'm, I've got a camera on you, there's a camera on me, and at the end of the conversation, what do we got? And that's what you discover in the editing room along with all these other things. So it was a voyage of discovery, the captains. It's on, by the way, uh, a screening uh, at the uh, graveyard. Uh, what do I mean? The Hollywood Forever the Cemetery. The Hollywood Forever <laughs> tonight yeah. at tonight, 7.30. Tonight, if you're in Los Angeles. Uh, first yeah. come, first serve. And on Saturday night on the Intrepid in New York City. Oh, really? Another oh. same thing. First come, first serve Love at it. the Intrepid. And, and, you know, you talk about it being a journey. At one point, you're singing Fiddler on the Roof with Scott Bakula on horseback. Right. Um, <laughs> I, were you trying to make an Old Spice commercial? Like, what, how, how, did that, how did that actually end up happening? Well, I, you know, I, when I first heard of Scott Bakula, it was on the musical stage. Mm -hmm. He evolved into being an actor, a wonderful actor, being captain of the, uh, of the starship of his thing. And, but he's originally musical, and uh, and I've always wanted to be musical. Now, we uh, got the special screenings mentioned, but i got to mention the next project because uh, we had a brief chat about it before right. this whole I've, thing started. I've got started. two things coming up that I think will be s of such interest to your, to your uh, viewers. One is uh, a book called Shatner Rules, uh, <laughs> and that will be coming out in October, the middle of October. And at the same time, within a, a day or two, is a uh, new album, a two-set album, called um, Seeking Major Tom, in which I try to find out what happened to Major Tom when he exited the capsule uh, in the David Bowie song. And uh, can we, I mean, I know it's it's early proposed plan kicking around in your head, but I, I did ask, like, hey, is there going to be a worldwide tour for this? Are you going to take this thing out? Well, I see it in, in some fantastical way in my mind as being a light show. I think there's something there that, uh, in my fantasy of the things I want to do, I think there's something really extraordinary and if i can make it happen it'll be uh, another fun project we will gladly anytime you want to perform it we'll get the smoke machines and some laser pointers and we'll make it happen here for you and and the pasties always we always got plenty of them william shatner always a pleasure sir. Yeah. you guys know william shatner the captain is now airing on epics and online at epicshd.com more attack of the show is on the way stay right there Looking for a way to kill more than just time this summer? Then you need to check out Zombie Highway. This driving game puts you on a zombie-infested desert highway where you only have one objective, kill zombies. Take down as many undead as you can before they tip over your car or you hit one of the many blockades in your way. Steer the car by tilting your iPhone or iPad and fire your weapons by simply tapping the screen. You'll receive points based on your total distance traveled, which can be used to upgrade your cars and weapons. Fight the living dead with a massive arsenal of Humvees, pistols, and sawed-off shotguns. You'll also be awarded medals based on your performance, which can be used to unlock additional levels within the game. With up to six different playable highways, you'll never run out of road. So get in on the zombie roadkill action and check out Zombie Highway in the iTunes App Store for only 99 cents. My girlfriend keeps getting yeast infections. Vaginitis. Why is this happening? Try Googling chronic vagitosis and then help her put out the... Coming up tomorrow on an all-new Attack of the Show. Actor Liam McIntyre from the ultra-violent, ultra-naked series Spartacus drops by the studio with the latest on the show's insane new season. Then we'll give you the lowdown on the free on-demand music service Spotify.
Will it crush Pandora and iTunes? And Chris Gore reviews trippy sci-fi thriller Source Code and horror flick Dylan Dog on DV Doosday. See it tomorrow. Oh, yes, we are back. And there's Quitrin to be done. That's right. Double uh, O Quanti says, now recovering from William Shatner on AOTS. <laughs> Nerdgasm. Yeah. Sounds like it. Pretty much. <laughs> uh, Sushi Cat Sun says, just that such a dignified interview was on the episode where Kevin craps a ham is mind blowing. Yeah, we really yeah. are quite yeah. the spectrum here. We've got everything you yeah. can want. I mean, ham we've crapping, it. William Shatner. Oh, we're just missing one thing. Hmm. Hey, Sarah, can you come in here really quick? Yeah. Oh. Okay, can you stand right here? I like where this is going. What? Boobies! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, they are. I'm a fan of you today. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I saw the, the crumbling remains of our gaming past. Well, let's take a creepy trip down memory lane with the TurboGrafx-16 and Tales from the Console Graveyard. In 1989, the console wars had begun. The NES was king. Sega was making waves with the debut of the Genesis, and Hudson Soft would release their new system, the TurboGrafx-16. First launched in Japan as a PC engine, Hudson had intended, but failed to sell their design to Nintendo as their new system. Eventually, they teamed up with the Nippon Electric Company, or NEC, to create the 16 as an alternative to the big two. Between Mario and Sonic at the time, in the late 80s, 90s, it was a street fight. It was a wonderful time where no one had really considered a console war, but that's what was happening. Do you want a bus or one of them? Originally advertised as the first 16-bit game console, the Turbo Graphics was actually an 8-bit system. Their graphics chip was 16-bit, so what you had were fairly eye-dropping visuals for the time with the same sort of 8-bit gameplay in terms of processing power. The 16 was priced at 200 bucks, came with a single controller that could toggle turbo settings, and was boxed with a copy of Keith Courage in Alpha Zones, an anime-based site scroller. Initially, the system sold decently in big cities like New York and LA, but struggled to catch on in the rest of the country. It was a, a weird experience because no one actually had a TurboGrafx-16. It was always a friend of a friend of a guy that somebody knows. Game cartridges were about the size of a credit card and the console could only physically support one D-pad. An issue with the TurboGrafx-16 was that it had one controller port in it, which meant if you wanted to play with your little brother or your friends, you had to buy an extra peripheral. A year after its launch, NEC released the first CD add-on, the TurboGrafx CD. And I just remember the music being so incredible and the sound effects sounding real, and that at its time was, was pretty cool. However, its additional $400 price tag turned away most consumers. It's one of those things that like, yeah, we can all pretend that it's revolutionary and great, but if nobody can afford to experience it, what's the point? Despite this, the TurboGrafx-16 would help launch several titles and cult classics like R-Type, the space adventure shoot 'em up the brawler Fighting Street, or as it would later be known, Street Fighter, and the horror fest Splatterhouse, which due to its violent and gory nature would become one of the first games to ever receive a parental advisory. However, the TurboGrafx-16's most popular and enduring franchise would be Bonk, the side-scrolling caveman who eventually became the console's mascot. I remember a little dude with a giant noggin, and you'd run around and you'd leap and you would headbutt things. And that was their crazy twist on the gameplay. You guys like that Mario thing, right? Where you jump and your, your feet kill the enemy? Well, get this. We're taking that idea and turning it on its head. Literally. <laughs> I bet that was the pitch meeting. Over the next few years, NEC would release updated models of the Turbo Graphics with increased memory and speed. However, these would fail to gain any ground on Sega or Nintendo. It didn't have the brand recognition. It was incredibly expensive. The CD peripheral was even more expensive, and it just didn't have a lot of the must-have games that drove sales of the other systems. The Turbo Graphics would only go on to sell about two and a half million consoles in the U.S. compared to the Genesis and Super Nintendo, which would sell between 20 to 30. 30 million each. There's an easy thing that was behind the uh, lack of success of the TurboGrafx-16. No one bought it. 
Though games continued to be developed in Japan until 1999, ultimately the TurboGrafx-16 would never find its place in the U.S. It did spawn a few decent games and, and really helped champion a couple franchises, but ultimately it will be remembered as uh, the system that you emulate on your Nintendo. one thing, it's that nut shots are hilarious. Yeah, and if it's taught us two things, it's that motorcycle burnouts are awesome for us, not so much for the motorcycle owner. <laughs> <laughs> He killed a Prius with his bike. Insurance fail. <laughs> many, many thanks to William Shatner, Sarah Underwood. Also thanks to Sarah Underwood again. Sarah Underwood one more time. And Dr. Solo Cup. Thank you guys. Hope you'll have a wonderful night. I know I am. Oh yeah, what are you doing tonight, Candace? I'm getting in my bed. Yeah. Oh, that's not where, I, up. not where I thought that was going. <laughs> I know it's not. All right, that's exciting. <laughs> I'm so exciting. You're going to be tweeting from that bed? Tweeting? Yeah. No. <laughs> All right, good night, everyone. Hey!